welcome to Hello Darling. I know it's been a minute. Um, I feel like my wife has just been very it's interesting going. lately. And as you can see, I have a special guest, um, my sister, my younger sister, Saray. Sorry, Map. Um, do you want to? Not my government name. Absolutely. Oh, why not? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? Um, Introduce yourself quickly. I mean, yeah, I sure. guess. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. As she said, I'm Saray. Saray Matt. Um, insert government name here. Um, I am her sister, mm -hmm. the light of her life, her other half. Oh, wow. Uh, her favorite person on the planet. What's yeah. What's well, I'm just saying, you know, if I don't answer the phone, she, you know. Anyway, yeah, but um, sure. I am, like she said, I'm her younger sister. I also have my own podcast, Tune In to Pivot. Every Saturday at 5 p.m. Um, yeah. stands for Pushing into Viable Ongoing Truths. What we talk about? Than me. Listen, I'm trying. I'm working on it. Now, we wouldn't say that. That's pushing it. That is pushing it. Real life. Um, you know? Uh, but every Saturday at 5 p.m. we talk about the truths that I've learned over my short 25 years on this planet. Um, outside of that, I work in higher ed. I absolutely love that. And, you know, I mean, I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> and I'm, so I'm super single, so to all the men out there. Oh, whoa. Well, you know, so, so we're single and about... not seeking, but, you know, open to all opportunities. Thank you so much for coming whoa. to my TikTok. We anyway. are <laughs> going to be talking about relationships today, but I wasn't <laughs> expecting that one, okay? Um, so, I know it's been I a minute. It was a good segue, though. Anyway, keep going. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a minute since I've been on my podcast. Honestly, I think since April 17th. And the next episode that was supposed to drop was supposed to be just the finished uh, three-part series of, like, buying a house, which I am still going to do. I just haven't had the chance to get to it. Um, I think just life has been life in lately. And I am actually going to be super real and raw, which is, I think, going to be the title of this episode. It's what I was sharing with Saray um, about just like actually sharing like what's going on in my life and this is a person that I trust and that I love and that can like ask me anything and I'm gonna cry this and up. so yeah <laughs> I feel like I am and she has had a lot going on in her life and I told her you know feel comfortable to share not even like in this advice giving way which you can mm -hmm. not just to me but to my listeners but just being open about like what we're going through I posted um like a week or two ago um, about like you don't have to look like what you're going through and you also someone's always said to me like oh my you just look like it. I get it all the time you look like you got it all together mm -hmm. and I was like if you only <laughs> no. that's the one oh. the two and the three to be quite handy <laughs> I'm telling you I'm gonna cry on this episode so already we just got started <laughs> <I know. laughs> we're three minutes and two seconds in it's <laughs> so crazy uh, it's okay. crazy it's okay. so um the episode title is Real and Raw, and I think I just want, this is, like I said, someone that I trust, and I want her to, to give her the space to ask me about, you know, in a way, rather than me just, like, word vomiting, like, asking me about, mm -hmm. like, what's happening, what's going on, and then just me being honest about all that, and then um, how I'm truly, truly um, leaning on my faith that I feel like it's been stretched and it's growing in this season in, like, ways that I can't even imagine, and how I'm like a big lesson for me um i'm living the lesson mm, that's a church sermon and we're gonna talk about i'm gonna be weaving in that all in and out of the combo all today, right. okay? love it. um but like literally learning to love people mm. when it's really hard to love people mm. basically like because i i think i've acted in a certain way for so long mm -hmm. it's really hard to to like really i think love like jesus yeah i don't think i've looked like jesus sometimes yeah and that's honest it's real so i mean that's factual I, yeah does anyone ever always love like jesus like come no. on and if that that's was the case would we need it right, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah so i don't know that's that's deep i think to just hit on the first thing that you said where you were saying you know sometimes people always tell you well people always tell you that you, you look like you have it together yeah um and how it's okay to like not look like what you're going through i think that's such a, a strong sentiment but like on the same token like on the flip side of that it always yeah. reminds me of like check on your strong friends for sure because your strong friends equally go through things but because Absolutely. they're the strong friend who do they turn to for sure. And then what does that look like? Exactly. And how do they move? And, and so noticing those nuances about people. I don't know. It just made me think about that. No, that's really good. Yeah. It makes me think about, because um, your strong friends typically are saying, like, oh, I'm relying on Jesus and my faith. And that's exactly what you should be relying on. And there's some seasons where that is the only person you should be relying mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But he did give us the gift of Come community. On. Come on. You're and board of directors. You really yeah. need 
to lean on your community, but the right community. Mm-hmm. And I would say council, we're going to make it spiritual, mm-hmm. the right spiritual council where people are going to be honest and not tell you what you want to hear mm-hmm. and hold you accountable, but do it in the most empathetic yeah. way. Not sympathetic, but empathetic way. Yeah. No, sure. and, and that's why I hit on the term board of directors because I heard that a yeah. few months ago. I can't remember who I heard it from. I want, it might have been in the sermon. Don't quote me on that, y'all. Yeah. Um, but... Basically, they were saying the same thing, you know, like, there is your community. There are your people, like, and I think of, when I think of community, I'm not going to say, like, the best analogy that I have for it is my cookout friends, right? Like, yeah. I, my community is, like, the people that I can kiki with, we have a good time. But my board of directors are the people that I know that are in my corner that help guide my life, okay. right? Yeah. I go to those people for advice. I go to those people when I, as a strong friend, am weak. I go to Absolutely. those people when I need course correction. I go to those people because I know they're going to tell me the truth uh, yeah. 3,000% of the time. For sure. So those are my board of directors, but I still have my community. Yeah, those are the people that I'm connected to. Those are the people that I can have conversations with. Those are the people that I can guide and lead. Mm-hmm. But I have my board of directors. That is a whole different yeah game. Okay. What I think what you refer to as your board of directors is I refer to as like my wise counsel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I like that terminology for sure. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. Okay, so back to you, sweet <laughs> angel. Oh, not so fat. <laughs> sweet angel, <laughs> but like it. What's going on? Feel us in. It has just been wild, if I'm really being honest. Yeah. Like, personally and professionally, I really thought um, that I had like my professional life together. Mm. And no, what's no, not professional. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Careful. It was a cackle that emitted right. from her spirit, Jesus. No, literally, no, no, no. I thought I had my personal life together. Mm-hmm. Um, and my professional life is just a, a big question mark, I mm. would say. Don't get me wrong. I am so grateful to have a job. Mm-hmm. I am grateful to be able to pay my bills on time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say this out loud. But I have some debt that I really want to tackle. Mm-hmm. And with what I'm making and even in the way that I'm stewarding it and I'm trying to steward it in the most responsible way, I am not perfect. Mm-hmm. I will say I'm a, and Ray knows this about me, a, um, a I'm not, I guess this is the wrong terminology, but like a quick buyer. If I see, I, the, if I see that, I like it, I buy it, I want. That's it. And I'm just going to buy it. Yeah, like that's, yeah. no. I'm trying to get better at that. Yeah. Or when something like major happens in my life, I'm like, oh, let's go get a new car. Or let's go book a trip. Or mm-hmm. listen to, and I'm trying to like learn to not run away from things. Yeah. So, but so I, I think I put in certain like habits where I'm working on that. And then I just downloaded this app. I'm forgetting the name, but I, I got it from my um, sister, I, I, not my blood sister, but sorority sister. But really, like, she's a genuine friend, Kinesia. Yeah. Um, I was over her house last week, and we were just catching up on her wedding. Shout out to um, Kinesia, shout out to the home team. Yeah. Okay. Not in her man. Right. Um, <laughs> but no, just really, just happy. I love black love. I love, I love Girl, something. don't get me started on that because I go for hours. Yeah. 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 That's on. what Shorty said. Right. Somebody did. Anyway. What's the name? Miss, Miss Long? Mo- money Long? Okay, money, money. But you don't spell it money like that. Yeah, but girl, anyway. said Miss Long. <laughs> she's so, I mean, well, technically, she is Miss yeah, Long. Yeah, but Miss Long. Money Long. Okay. Mm-hmm. But basically, like, I'm getting that in order, but my professional life just has like a big question mark because I'm just trying to figure out like what is it that I want to do and like what is Maya's why at this point because Mm -hmm. I think before if I'm being honest my why was made up or came from the people around me Mm -hmm. so when I was in college and originally the plan was to go to law school Mm -hmm. and then I pivoted and went into higher education I just had a lot of voices Mm -hmm. where I one of those main voices was God like and I, I know that I'm supposed to be supporting education in general because that was a a key component in my constitution and how I grew up Mm -hmm. education is your key to success Mm -hmm. you cannot just get a bachelor's you need to get a master's and they are expecting doctoral degrees Mm -hmm. this sweet sweetie pie over here is you know gonna probably beat me at doing the doctor the the doctoral degree right now because I was not sure uh, about that but um just right now what I'm currently doing I like what I do but I, I I would like to Um, in a different capacity yeah maybe in a different capacity and um financially kind of just be in a different place Mm -hmm. um and then personally um i am gonna say this too and he like loves me so i don't think he would have an issue with me truly being like honest Mm -hmm. um but we have decided to go i'm about to cry jesus (laughs) okay you're right i'm like i'm okay with doing that but um we decided to go our separate ways and when you separate from someone, 
that, and I want to make sure I use the correct language, that you thought God told you as your person, mm -hmm. genuinely, because the reason why I'm comfortable having this conversation with my sister is because she has been there for no, every time I'm Dick and Harry. Yeah. <laughs> if no. we're being honest. Yeah. Where we thought, oh, we thought this one was the one. And Who's we? No, 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 not we. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm saying as in oh, we okay. and Eve. Uh, where I may have thought someone was the one before, mm -hmm. but like deep down knew and wasn't willing to admit, mm -hmm. oh, something isn't right with this person. Because they're comfortable. Correct. Or I don't trust this person. But with this, you know, particular, you know, most recent partner, um, I, all those things were like checked off the box for me. Yeah. And um, I do believe in like what's meant to be is meant to be. But this has just been really hard when when you feel like you know with every fiber of your being, mm -hmm. even though it's hard, nothing is perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, like just, you know, we're human and yeah. people mess up yeah. and you're not always um, like showing up at 100%. Mm. Um, that can be difficult, but that's what a relationship is. Yeah. I think you choose to work through those things and it takes two people to do that. Um, but the, the timing also has to be right. Mm, yeah. And I also believe For both that's correct. Correct. Yeah. And also that you have to be spiritually aligned. Mm. So I want to kind of like backtrack a little bit on what I said, because I, I the, key, the, the one thing that I really wanted to point out when I said like the key word was, I thought God told me something, mm, right? There it is. And it's about truly having confirmation mm -hmm. and having not only peace, but the other party receiving that confirmation mm -hmm. from God. And two, to make sure that you are both spiritually aligned. And not when I say aligned, I think that sounds so cliche, but what I genuinely mean is you need to be, and I used to go back and forth on this, and I think sometimes I still do. But when we talk about like, two halves don't make a whole like mm -hmm. you need to come in fully whole so mm -hmm. it's one plus one equals two mm -hmm. i feel like and you know this is you, you i think you're a big proponent of you well this is a big, like a big proponent in your life like you have to love yourself Facts. enough and completely yeah. no and i don't care like down the line when i get married and have kids and you know same for you what or minus the kids, possibly. <laughs> I'm glad you know these. <laughs> I know. Keep down with that. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. But your husband or your wife will not complete you. There and it is. is not their responsibility to there make is. you happy. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes we get a little too big for our britches. Mm. And really aren't willing to admit to ourselves like, oh, I don't really have me together mm -hmm. like yes y'all i got the house yes i got the car yeah i got the dog yeah i got the job I'm glad you put yeah, my best dog in there that's right of course um i mean <laughs> i feel like i'm a good looking woman yeah and i i bring not a lot to the table but i bring the table mm -hmm. i need someone to bring their own table yeah so we can have a 12 footer yeah instead of a six footer yeah and Sometimes I feel like that's a lot to ask. It's such someone. a good analogy, hold on, because I got a visual in my head of like two six foot and then covered in the cloth of God. Woo! And that doesn't look like Sheesh. a supper. Literally. Literally. Like, that's for, so good. God okay. prepared. Pre wow. Come, come, Psalms 23. Wow. Wow, that's a good one. Okay, anyway, that's, keep going. I'm sorry. That's I, real. That really, I was envisioning that. That is real life. That's Seriously. so good. That's and so good. That's yeah. what, I, I, what I want. Yeah. And I just have to continue to like. Build on, and I don't want to. I want to be clear. Those material things, those physical yeah, yeah, yeah. things that I'm alluding to, does not that's not the my table. whole six foot table, yeah, right? No. Those are pieces. But I'm talking about being spiritually whole. Mm, where, yeah. and I'm gonna. I stole this from my sister, but I got this wisdom from her. Saray. She said something to me two weeks ago, and she was like, Maya, I feel like now you are finally at a place mm. where your non negotiables are non negotiable, and you gonna stand ten toes down. Okay. Period. Yeah. Nothing's changing that. Yeah. You're not going to um, settle mm -hmm. or mi minimize yourself. Mm -hmm. At least personally, professionally, we're still working on that. It's yeah. been really difficult, honestly. Yeah. Whenever the next season comes, I'll feel more comfortable sharing what's going on professionally. Um, but just personally right now, 
I, I know now that I can't, I can't waver mm. in certain things anymore. Mm -hmm. And if someone ain't got it, they just ain't got it. You got to move on. Exactly. And if you don't have what they need either, you have, that's a hard truth. Yeah. And you have to be willing to admit to yourself like, oh, like this just, it, no, it, it, this isn't it or this yeah. isn't right. And I also want to be like truthful too. In the past where I think I've made a mistake is where I always had people like, my people don't like to spend a block. And if you don't know what spend a block means, that means oh, they're always right on, they're on double back. Like, mm -hmm. I realize, like, oh, I messed up. Like, I oh, this girl life. was great. And don't get me wrong, I've had that happen. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want them when they came back. Fetch. But I used to also have, like, hold this false hope mm. um, or false sense of hope in my heart. Yeah. Where I was just hoping that they would come back and, like, oh, this is just like, you know, right person, wrong time. Yeah. And I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. And if it's something is meant to be, it'll be. But that is not a reason for you to stay stagnant mm -hmm. and be like um, Lot's wife. Yeah. And look back mm -hmm. and completely miss your future and miss where you're at. Okay. So if I'm going to be hot, humble, open, and transparent, and then I'm going to hush up and let you throw your uh, another question out there or share something. Um, I pray for the house that I'm in, the house that we're recording in right now. Mm -hmm. I bought this house in October and mm -hmm. was rarely here. Correct. Based off of like professional mm -hmm. like requirements that I had to be in another um, part of the you know state and a lot of travel, which I don't mind travel, but um, I would stay with, and I, y'all were being honest, so this may shock to me, all, but I would stay with my partner. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, nothing crazy going on. I'm, you know, still trying to hold it down. P.O.P. Hold it down. It's real, you know. It's a little difficult, you know. It's difficult, and your girl is, you know. Things get a little spicy dicey on occasion. And it's all, that's all right. That's real life. And that's I, real life. I, yeah. I feel like some people like to hide it mm. and not want to talk about that part. How can but you fix things that, that don't get spoken about? Come on. You got to have freedom. Yeah. You got to be able to call yourself out. And you yeah. Gotta, I, again, non negotiables, now non negotiables. But. I was rarely in the house that I prayed for. Mm -hmm. And when all of this happened, when we, you know, made this decision, um, and if I'm being honest, like this is a d decision that I had brought up mm -hmm. a while back, but decided to give this person more time. And then they made that final decision for the both of us. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was really for me, it, I felt like it came out of the blue, but deep down, I guess I knew like maybe this just may not be right. Mm -hmm. And there is no ill will. I love this person so much. I will always have love for this person. We have a beautiful friendship. I mm -hmm. literally never thought I would be like on a podcast. So I feel like I'm a co-parent or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this is my this is real life. Um, I, you know, there's there's so much love there, and there there will always be love there. And yeah. like I'm a big proponent, like just never say never. Um, but I know right now we're just called to different spaces. Yeah, and. I'm willing to accept that, but it's just something that I have to like continue work to work through, on yeah. and work through. This is not automatic no. because I was in a routine um, of being okay. in a certain area with yeah. a certain person, and obviously with my dog as well. And now that just looks so different. And I just remember that was a conviction in my heart after we decided to, you know, when you separate from someone and you, I, your time is now just like, what do I do with myself with all this time? Literally. Yes. <laughs> my phone yes. is dry. I have yes. nobody to talk to. Don't get me wrong. I love you. I love no, no, you. I I but yeah. I'm like, I, what do I do with myself? At Girl, this you're point? preaching to the choir right now. No. <laughs> Maybe I have lived that life <laughs> several times. I was like, what? what? <laughs> and, but too, when you really get to a place where, like we said, you're non negotiables or you're non negotiables, yeah. you're willing, even though it hurts like hell, mm -hmm. to sit in that place that part. for an unbeknownst amount of time mm -hmm. where I'm genuinely not interested. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to see nobody's son. Mm -hmm. I don't want to date nobody's son. Mm -hmm. I just want to be with Maya yeah. right now yeah. and love on Maya and steward what she has yeah. so I can genuinely be a home mm. for someone. Mm. Like a, not a house. Mm. Not just a six foot table. That's so good. But to be a Home that's so good for somebody. That's so good. And to be a home for somebody. Yeah. I'm not trying to take God, you know, God's place. I don't want no, to no, idolize yeah. me. But to be able to set an atmosphere mm. in the next relationship. Yeah. Where I'm 
learning and I learned this in, in, in my past relationship like where people are going to lead be able to lead in different areas mm-hmm. and I think I've always I, I've been very ABC mm-hmm. I need you to lead in this area and if you don't lead in this area then no Mm-hmm. Or I'm going to be really hard. Or I may have a little attitude, or you're going to feel an energy shift. Mm-hmm. Um, that don't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it ebbs and flows. Yeah, it's just because I'm strong in this season, or in this season, in this area, does not mean I'm going to be strong in that season in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the next season. Right? So true. Yeah, and that's real, and I think that comes with like maturity and stuff. Yeah, and I feel like I had something else to say, but I can't remember. I, I kind of jumped in a lot of things. No, that's but, fine. No, because I, I I was thinking when you were talking about yeah. the being a home for someone, I I call it being a safe space for people. Yeah. But my my and I don't think you asked me for advice, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. For sure. Because I've done this, you know, breakup thing several times. Yeah. <laughs> um, me too. But yeah. And what I've learned, especially now, like yeah. especially in the transition part of my life between like 23 and 25. I've learned that in the time that I have by myself, I'm choosing to steward that time as if I were to date myself. Yeah. And absolutely. it's not just like the intention of like going out on dates, but like the same questions that I'm going to be asking my significant other, I'm going to ask those questions to myself. So I have those and I'm going to get my, like, I'm going to learn to know myself in a way. So when I'm creating that safe space for you, I'm also creating it for myself. Absolutely. But it's also, then I had to look at it too, because a lot of the times like my relationships ended because they weren't a safe space for me, mm-hmm. but I was a safe space for them. Yeah. So what am I giving you? Exactly. It does not give you the space to create a safe space. For Absolutely. Me. And so then I started to work on myself that way. And it's a whole lot easier to sit at the crib by yourself when you're working on yourself. Correct. As opposed to just sitting by yourself. Correct. Um, so that was just a little teeny bit of no, that's I know really you're, good. you're a little new to this this in this life. No, I'm not new. No, I've been here done that several I'm times. Just, but be, be, be but quick. I know quick. For, <laughs> so right, the type of person where she can like go through something I feel like personally from what yeah. I can see and kinda like self-assess mm-hmm. not overthink and kind of move on to the next thing yeah and we also have two very different approaches to dating yeah very we're just two different human beings yeah. in that arena yeah so for me i self-assess um yeah assess and mm-hmm. then like sometimes i overthink you, and then yeah you overthink and, then, and you feel very hard yeah i'm a, I'm, I'm a huge feeler yes and i'm very working sad. on learning to feel my feelings because I was having I think I might have been having a conversation with you yeah I know I definitely had it with Jordan Jordan my best friend shout out to the home team hey buddy yeah. he's on my board of directors yeah definitely um but we were having a conversation and I think just because how we were raised we know how to articulate our emotions well Absolutely. but not always feel them correct and so I'm starting just to get myself you're crying does not mean you're feeling exactly exactly that very clear. exactly that's, that, that doesn't mean like that's an emotion exactly and yeah. so I'm giving myself space to feel my emotions more. Yeah. Because you can articulate all day long and then five years down the line still be mad about it because you haven't felt it. Because we learn how to perform. Exactly. In anger. Exactly. 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 (laughs) Exactly. Anyway, we've learned how to literally and all of that show it up. And the crazy part is the root of all that could be depression. No. You could be depressed and it show up as irritability. Exactly. You could be depressed and it show up as anger. You could be anxiety. Thank you. Or fear. All of the things. Absolutely. And so like for me, that's where I'm at right now in my yeah. space in this singleness. But it's also because like I've learned to shift um, because I think we do the same thing in a very different way. Yeah. Um, I tell you all the time, and I don't know if I'm supposed to say this on camera, but yeah. I'm gonna say it anyway. I, I tell you all the time that I feel like you lose yourself in a relationship. Yeah. And I don't think that I lose myself, but my pro- like I lose my thoughts. Yeah. Like my thoughts are always on like, how are they doing? What are they doing? Like I always consistently always checking about them. Yes. In, yeah. in a form, if you're gonna make it spiritual, idolizing. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. I've done that. And I have like been working on like. I can still love and accept you and like be ready to like my Sorry. bad love my and <laughs> accept you and be ready to create a safe space for you yeah. and not think about you all the time yeah. or not worry about how you're doing like I'm gonna still worry about you because that's my job or you know? be concerned yes. like, so, to think about you but yes. I'm, not, I'm gonna be gonna cognizant of you be aware life. of you yes. exactly yes. and I, I wanted to chime in here regarding like your statement when I hear singleness and I heard this um the other day mm-hmm. two things mm-hmm. singleness is an opportunity for you to really i'm not talking about dating but mm-hmm. like to use your time how you want to use facts. it because i kid you not in the last week or two i don't book two trips facts facts oh i love it oh i love it i, like, can, I can always pop up at Maya's house because Maya, not that you're always here but like yeah. no, nine times out of ten you know i can pop up my my no not pop up at my house because i'm never there when you ask for it somewhere but Do now what? she couldn't do that before because I was always yes, gone. Facts, facts, facts. Um, but it's but like literally, like, and so I'm enjoying you, the single life. You can, and, but not only just like it's not just about dating or doing trips, but like if you want to write a book, if you yeah. want to do the, whatever project you want to start, like you have the time to do that because at one point, 
what I think we're a lot of us are seeking God for so mm. much. When we get that gift, mm. we may find you know ourselves in the middle of that gift, just like I'm in the middle of this house. Mm-hmm. And like, not knowing how to steward it. Not even not knowing how to steward it, but not being grateful for mm-hmm. it. Because, like, I'm yearning for what I had in the past. Tracking. Like, I wish I had more time. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could move how I wanted to yeah, do yeah. that type of thing. And so now it's just, like, you got to be a little bit more cognizant. Right? You got to be I, more aware. I have mentors yeah. who are happily married but and have kids but are like, if I, I could have to switch yes. with you for a day. Yes. Just to get up. Move how I want to move. Go to Target. Do this. Book a trip. Like, mm-hmm. and not have to check in with anybody. Yes. See how you know. So that's one thing. And mm-hmm. then um, I'm gonna call her Miss Jonas, but she obviously she just you know got married to Nick. But she had this quote yesterday that knocked me off my feet. Like Nick Jonas? Yes. Oh, oh Bianca. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, Miss like, Jonas. I was like, oh my god. Trendy. Sorry, keep going. Um, <laughs> she said, "I don't read my books backwards." And when she said that, I literally almost fell on the floor. And what she meant by that was when we think about when we exit out of, you know, chap, or, you know one chapter mm-hmm. that we're in, she's like, I, I go to the next. Like, I'm looking forward. I'm looking ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm not going back to reread chapters. Come on. So I don't read my books backwards. So that should need to be your view of life. Fair. Like, and just how the pastor said today. Like when it comes to like God, you've seen God, you know, be faithful and he's done miracles. And I'm just going to, it came out of Matthew 14 and we're running out of time because we want, we want this to be right around 30 minutes because it may stop recording. But, Somebody um, check. it's, it's like, crazy. <laughs> um, Pete, we're, we're, we're definitely probably going to have a part two to this. Yeah, I'm pretty fine. sure we can record this um, later today. But, um, it's, this is about Peter and the disciples and they just saw Jesus feed 5,000, right? Mm-hmm. Two fish and five loaves of bread. Yeah. But then... If you continue on in this chapter, they then move to seeing Jesus. Um, like he puts them in a boat and says, "Like, hey, go, you know, basically sail." But Jesus is sending them into a storm. Mm-hmm. And pre- like the pastor was saying, that the title of the lesson was li- like "Living in a Lesson." Mm-hmm. Title of the sermon, my bad. And um, Peter, in the middle of the storm, they think they see a ghost. The ghost is obviously Jesus, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not a ghost. Um, but as Peter, Peter then asks Jesus and says, "Hey, if it's you." I, I called me to come out there. Mm-hmm. And Jesus says one word. Come. Period. That's it. Period. That's it. That's all. He gave you a command, which was your direction. And some of us are literally waiting for God. To give us confirmation on the command, on the command, on the command. That he done already command. gave us. Several times over. When he say let go, let go. When he say stop, stop. When he and say hard. move, move. And it's hard. And it's hard. It's, and we're human. But literally, as Peter walks out, he's walking, and then he... Then, you know, you know, he starts to, he looks around at the waves and the wind. Mm-hmm. He gets scared. And then Jesus is like, oh, you a little face, but a little faith. But then immediately reaches down to like grab him. Mm-hmm. He um, pulls him up. And the pastor was saying, well, I would have two questions for Jesus. First of all, why'd you send me into a storm? Mm-hmm. I guess I'm going to add in three because that's not the first question. Secondly, why did you not just stop the wind, it, bro, while mm-hmm. I was walking out to you? Which... I have been asking him lately. Sorry, y'all, we ran out of time, so hopping right back into it. But um, the, the three points, right? I think the first question I was asking, like, okay, why, Jesus, did you send me into a storm? Mm-hmm. Secondly, um, why why did you not just calm the wind down when you saw that I was afraid? Mm-hmm. And then third, like, you walked back with me. Like, why did you even let me sink? Mm-hmm. Like, why? Or if we were going to stay on the boat. Why I had to come out here in the first place? Yeah, correct. <laughs> That's the better like, question. If, if, no, if we were going back, back to the boat, we were going back to the boat. Why did I have to come out here? Better yet, why did you wait till the butt crack of night? Because I thought you was a ghost, but, sir. You could have appeared during the daytime. Correct. We was just with you during the daytime. Just, just like a miracle. Okay. Okay. However, but I mean, like in, in the darkest times of our life, in our night times, he tests our faith. He tests Not our only faith. Not to test you know? our faith, but I think I love the pastor's analogy regarding like. What is the wind in your life? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you experiencing? You said maybe it wasn't about him walking on water. Maybe Correct. it was about him learning how to not be afraid of the wind. Correct. So the next time you encounter the wind, you're not afraid. That's exactly. Like, oh, you're tell you so, but not only that, when I say, like, what is your wind? I want people to think, like, I'm not talking about, like, the physical wind. But, like, what, what scares you? What is holding you back in fear? Is it, like, for me... Because I've separated, like, with the person that I thought I was going to be with for life. And maybe I'm just young and naive and I may listen to this, like, a year or two from now and be like, girl, girl please. <laughs> like, I don't 
you I probably just, will because you're kind of always like this. No, I mean, no, not always. This I, no, I think it's different. Yeah, but I for think sure. in in some facets of it. I mean, yeah, I think in yeah. my response and like mm-hmm. certain things, I would be like, okay, shoddy, come on. This but really, did. go like being like truthful, like experiencing that, like my win, and like even when I shared with him. So honestly, I'm like. I like I'm so afraid because you, you were my safety. Like mm. I feel like you were my security. Like mm. I had no question. I know, and that sounds like I'm talking to a God, right? Because God is my security. Was I idolizing this man? Maybe that's why he was removed. I, 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 maybe. <laughs> maybe that's why maybe. he was removed. <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to be nice about it because we're on camera. I, I, okay. <laughs> double-edged sword mm-hmm. because I think we use language like that right mm-hmm. and like I said I want to be someone's home right mm-hmm. so it's just what what meaning you put to it and I think mm-hmm. also the quality and the value that mm-hmm. you put on that so I think in a way like I could definitely see you know, when I was writing that out and I was sharing this with him I was yeah. like oh my gosh I'm totally idolizing this man I'm trying to make him my god but then in another way I'm like oh I want my husband to be like I want to feel secure yeah with my husband I want to feel safe with yeah. my husband like those are certain things and so those aren't bad qualities but I was just like realizing that my wind is like loneliness. And I felt like, mm. oh my gosh, like my, didn't you like have the same thing like two years ago? Like were, were you afraid to be alone? Like to be so, in silence? Let me, let's, let's stop there for a second. Yeah. Is your, is, are you afraid of being alone or are you afraid of being lonely? And do you equate them to both the same thing? I think that because I if, if, if anyone really knows me I'm an introvert so I love yeah. actually true. being by myself like being around people you may think I love it and I, it's not that I don't but it drains yeah. me so for me to like whoop again <laughs> no way was that what you're talking about whoop <laughs> <laughs> literally okay like I need to go recruit and like be by myself. Yeah, that's gonna be our thing now. That you're yeah. like, I need some woo time. Okay, I got Literally. you. <laughs> I need some me time. But um, I think it's the fear of the future of being alone forever. Mm. And when I say alone, like, okay, God, you you've given me this desire. Mm, that's such a terminal mindset for a, a current condition. I, I know. That's so interesting. Say that. Oh, no, and I'll just say that again. That's such a terminal mindset for a current condition. A terminal mindset for, for a current, current condition. condition. Literally, because this is so circumstantial, mm, yeah. and that's how, that's why I'm like, I could probably look back on this three or four years from now, yeah. like being a completely different. Yeah. And I would hope like, so. You no, know, literally, yeah. that's the prayer. Yeah, but and be like, I thought, you know, is this the end all be all? But I, I've been in a place where I thought something was the end all be all, like back mm. in 2018. I know I'm not there. Yeah. So another thing that is like kept me, in spite of everything that's going on, and how I look back and like think about God's faithfulness, is like. I've been lower than what I what I am now. Like mm. lower where yeah, yeah. almost in a hospital losing hair and all this stuff. Yeah. But I've learned like baby girl, you're gonna be alright. This just hurt <laughs> right now. Yes. But you're gonna be alright. Yes. You you gonna yeah. eventually it's, it's gonna get together, you're gonna be able to to move and all this yeah. stuff. And I think that's what I I'm I really leaning into and really y'all to, to wrap up the the biblical side because I don't mm. want to just drop the sermon and then not finish it up that's our question to, to you like what is your win what is the thing that you are afraid of that you may be fearful um uh, that's holding you back from mm, your sanctification in God mm. sanctification requires separation there it is and if you are not now I want to actually. I need to pull. Can you get your phone and mm-hmm. to look up the definition of sanctification? Set so apart and chosen. Oh, so <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because I wrote it on my board. I have a board on my my fridge and I write notes to myself. Okay, so give yeah. me the definition again. Set apart and chosen right. for so, a designated purpose. That's the full purpose. purpose. Yeah. I want to make it very clear. Everyone has a call in their life. Mm, yeah. Your call is to God. Yeah. Period. Period. Ministry and one of my mentors, his name is Philip, super dope guy. Shout Mary out to has kids. <laughs> yeah, shout out to him, California brother. Um, <laughs> he, is, uh, woo. Um, 
he was like, you know, people say like, oh, I know I have a call in my life or someone says, oh, you got a call in your life, it's ministry. And people automatically equate ministry to like somebody's pulpit mm -hmm. or being a small group leader yeah, or being an evangelist. Da, da, da. Being in ministry is just a call to service. There it is. It's you can be just holding the door. To serve. You can be directing oh, traffic. You can be, like, well, not even welcoming people into your home. Facts. Hospitality is yeah, a gift. It is. Saying hey to somebody. Administration, hey, filing some papers. It's a, a gift. gift. It's yes. just being of service. Watching somebody's feet. Yes. Going to do your grandmama's hair when she can't being get her hair. Being a carpenter anymore. is a Good, gift. Giving money, like serving. That is, everyone has And that doing call. so with a cheerful heart. With a cheerful and not any mumbling or groaning, mm -hmm. literally. Yeah. So that's, I want to make that like very clear. Mm -hmm. But going back to like separation, and I'm learning like in this season where maybe I've like run from some things from so long, and mm -hmm. I've even had like this person share like, I know you have a call in your life and um, I don't want to get in the way of that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking all the time, I know you have a call in your life mm -hmm. and I don't want to get away from that. And I, we've always told each other, always shared that our love is so deep that we genuinely want each other to be happy and to be fruitful, even if it's not with each, with other. each other. Yeah. And genuinely, truly mean that. Because yeah. I've said that times before y'all. And then and didn't mean it. A damn bit of it. Mm, I felt that. Didn't mean it at all. Okay, just said it to say it. This time, I just hit him with the be blessed because you know I can't. <laughs> what am I like for, baby? I, I, I'm not there yet. It's okay. Oh my gosh, no. I, and normally I, when I say be blessed, I'm angry. I'm like, mm, be blessed. That means the conversation's over. Okay. If you're unaware. So if you've ever been told to be blessed, you need, you probably wouldn't have blessed it. All right. All right. But no, this time, genuinely meaning it yeah, yeah and sometimes genuinely meaning something can hurt mm. no that's factual because you're like oh no i really mean this for you mm -hmm. but this is just not how i saw this way mm -hmm. now that's real all. life that is, that is real 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 life. real real and that's, that's how you life. really know that's what real love is mm, come on a true love is to be able to sacrifice if you love something let it go you got to let it go. Mm -hmm. Just how God let his son go for us. Sheesh. How he lets us go in. Sacrifice. I mean, he holds us, but baby. 16, baby. He said, baby, you have free will. There you go. You have free will. But John 3, 16, those he gave are his able son. To come, to me. come on. Yeah. He really let his son go yes. because of his love for us. And that's the one thing, too, that I will say that I've been leaning into, like, really reminding myself it's not even about god's character who he is like those things are really important mm -hmm. but like of his love for me mm -hmm. and i've like started like saying like for for my sanity for me to be able to get up out of my bed every day you know i have cried every single day of june since mm -hmm. this has happened and actually before that because my work life was like shambles yeah, at this point mm -hmm. i just have started saying goodness and mercy is chasing me mm -hmm. i can't run away from it Mm -hmm. It's chasing me from every angle. Mm -hmm. So any, while I'm crying out to God, while I'm, it's two, and this is one thing I've said this before in past episodes, like some people equate prayer to speaking. Mm -hmm. The word says in the Bible, when you don't have the words to pray or say yourself, the Holy Spirit speaks on your behalf through your tears mm -hmm. or through whatever, through that groaning. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you can just mumble or you're just like, oh God, like your spirit is speaking on your behalf because God is the one person. And the only person who truly knows your heart. I'm going to make that very clear. Thanks. So, I mean, I feel like we dropped so many gems. Like, there's just so many good things. I, I just need you to run this statement back for a second. So it was good. in between the crying every morning and, and the Holy Spirit. And something about chasing you. Say that one more yeah. time. Goodness and mercy is always chasing me. And it will chase me. When are you going to start running? But no, it's not. Even, it's not. It's not even about that mm. because it's not even about you stopping running. Mm -hmm. Because the word says, "Goodness and mercies will goodness and mercy will follow me all the day of my mm -hmm. life." So, because God is not calling me to be stagnant, mm -hmm. I'm always going to be moving. Sometimes God may have me running. Sometimes He may have me walking. Mm -hmm. But for me, when we think about chasing, like, and I, I, I think CC Wine has used this language. Come on, CC. We love CC. Come her on, man. Um, you better throw that finger up. Yes, oh, church, church finger. <laughs> I like goodness and mercy goes before me, baby. Come on, yes, that but it goes before me, goes, goes before beside me, me but it, it's Listen. literally I can't get away from it. And but to that point, because God, and this is I, I'm gonna, I'm so I'm so happy I can say this because I've been waiting for years, years, y'all. This is me being honest. Waiting years. Okay, well say happen. it. I know you can't just leave it up like a I know, look, but you're like, my wait, what? It's been 35 seconds. I, Come on, <laughs> hurry up. But I've memorized the fruits of the spirit. What? And the reason why <laughs> <laughs> these 
headphone listeners. Sorry to the, the headphone listeners, baby, because we done told her. Okay. You know what? No, seriously. But I'm going to say it real quick, right? And I, 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 I have to right. share this with him. But Come on. I, give me a second. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. All right. Those That's that last, that last one's reckless. Because <laughs> we're working on her. We work every day. Been up for a while. We don't know each other. We're trying to be friends, though. Oh, that's her story. But those are the nine fruits of the spirit. Yeah. And when, when I think about goodness and mercy, mm -hmm. and what I've really had to lean into in this time, when I say chasing me down, those are character traits of God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, when we say it so lightly, and we say it in a joking way, like I just wish God like was here. I wish I wish I could feel him. Because those things are constantly chasing me down, those are character traits of God. God's word also says he will never leave me nor forsake me. God's presence is always with me. You know what's it's funny? It's my choice to tap in and lean into it and, and to acknowledge it. Yeah. I think it's so funny that you're saying this right now. And here's why. Okay. So, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell the people this, but a few days ago. Don't no, draw no names. Yeah, no, no, no. A few okay. days ago. <laughs> My, she she already told you that she didn't cry and everything. So she called me one day crying. You know, as a good sister, I did my job. I was trying to, you know, hold it down. I was trying to hold it down, my sweet angel. But immediately after we got off the phone, I prayed. And I said, God, I need her to feel your spirit. Absolutely. I need her to feel. Cry. Don't cry because then I'm going to start crying. I said, I want her to feel you as if you were there hugging her. Yeah. So it's so interesting that you say that now because prayers really do get answered in that way. Absolutely. Those because because I said it, I said, I'm not there. So yeah. I can only be there virtually, but you can be there at any moment. Yeah. Let her feel you like she's never felt you before. Absolutely. So I love that like you mentioned that because it it always I always wonder sometimes I'm like, does he hear me? He hears me. Absolutely. He hears me. Yeah. And it's not just me, but he hears me to work for other people. Absolutely. And that's what matters. Absolutely. So Oh Chad, I, I don't cry, but you got you almost had me in there. You had me in the first hand thing. Oh my God. Thing. Put it back, Jesus. <laughs> Suck it up. Oh my gosh, Ooh. that is amazing. I'm like about to get so churchy right now, but you know how it says like um, a triple word. Yeah, like, trips up the heart, but like negativity dries up the bones. Like, yeah, that's serious. And I am so with you. And I, that's the one thing I was praying over you in church today. Mm -hmm. When you know the pastor asked us to you know pray over like our person's like wins, mm -hmm. uh, not wins, but like the wind. wind. W i n d. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, in their life. And just like truly praying, I just have to say, don't forget my, <laughs> my thoughts. But like, oh, about him, like actually, like answering our prayers. Yeah. And like, obviously, you know what your win is. It's not my place to share. Mm -hmm. But um, like praying that like God, like you actually hear us, like mm -hmm. you hear our prayers and our mm -hmm. prayers for other people. And today's sermon was like a testament to that. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I even had to apologize in my prayer because I said it jokingly when we walked in, but I was like, okay, God, thanks for being on my neck again. I was like, living a lesson? You really want to throw this in my face right now? You said, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm literally right now is the only time you're listening. listening. <laughs> the, right now is the only time you're listening because you're vulnerable. Let's, let's talk about it. 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 No, no, because I, I got that revelation in the shower. No, literally. Um, because, you know, like, it's so real. I really love to think that the shower is the only time you're really by yourself. Yeah. Like you're in the shower. I cried this morning in the shower. Thank you. And you're vulnerable because and not being funny, but you're naked. You're naked. You're naked. Physically. You're naked. Yeah. And that's what also like let's let's circle to on the on the not the secular, but secular side of yeah. things. Most men they say that they cry in the shower because that's the only time they feel vulnerable enough, right? Yeah. Because they're covered by sound, yeah. right? Um, and I got the revelation in the shower the other day. I was like, I something dropped in my spirit. It was like I can I talk to you here. Mm -hmm. I'm here with you here because you're vulnerable enough to be vulnerable with me. Correct. Like that's so good. You you met me. You're meeting me in your secret place. Yes. Which is what the word I command I command you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> get, in, <laughs> get in your prayer closet. <laughs> to get in your closet. Okay. And talk to me. That's a command. Yes. And we. And we oh my gosh. When we listen to God's command, that's when we get to commune. Mmm. Mm, that's so good. That's God, so you're good. Doing your thing that's so good, good. Bro. That's so good. You are doing your thing today, God. And that's the thing. Like, like I feel like sometimes we we hear sermons, we hear we talk to people, and it feels yeah. like they're stepping on our necks because that is the only time where we're vulnerable enough with God to really listen. Yes, like actively listen. And but we can have that experience. Your Sunday experience can be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Consistently. And 
I, so we hopped in my car today to go mm-hmm. to church, and I was listening to a podcast mm-hmm. by um, Lisa. I thought it was the radio. I'm glad you said the podcast. I'm it was a podcast. <laughs> okay. By the Bevere uh, family. Love this family. And um, I've kind of been on a kick because I'm just sometimes got to take like mental breaks from yeah. stuff. So um, they were talking about in their, her and her husband have been married for 40 years. They have four boys, mm-hmm. which, you know, is a dream for me. I'm four three. But not do not sit in the T.T. Ray house all at one time. Thank you for coming um, to my TED Talk. One of their oldest sons has been married for, like, 14, uh, 14 years. And um, basically what they were sharing in this conversation was that um, – I don't know. I'm forgetting my thoughts. Hold on. Um, because mm, that just distracted me. Sorry, I'm, our mom Mom's just called calling. in the middle of the podcast. This is real life. This is as real as it gets. Um, oh, but about setting the tone and the atmosphere of the home. Mm. And the husband, he would get up every morning and pray for an hour and a half over the family. And obviously that was in their preachers and stuff. But that sacrifice time. And his wife, Lisa, even though she's a speaker, you know, felt some type of way. Like, I want my husband to come sit and have coffee with me and spend time with me. Mm. Um and but she was she was a stay-at-home mom she raised her boys and all this stuff while the dad was preaching and all this stuff um and ooh, next episode gonna be about obedience because obedience equals protection um it's a whole nother conversation but she like would talk to god in the shower and would talk to god kind of like just throughout like doing little activities throughout the day with the, with the boys and she would get revelations uh you know from god and the boys would too and the dad was kind of frustrated like I spend an hour and a half with you every morning, God. Mm. And this is like my regimen. I'm so mm-hmm. routine. And that's the problem. And then you have Lisa. Because no, routine is not bad. That's another conversation. I don't, mm. I don't feel like routine is bad. But that's Lisa would talk to you th- throughout, you know, random parts of the day, which is truly the definition of praying without ceasing, and hear you more than yeah. I would. Yeah. And so God had to break his mold of that. Not that he stopped praying for an hour and a half, but like, Okay, you would pray for me for an hour and a half and then didn't talk to me again for another 23 hours. Mm-hmm. So how can I talk to you throughout the day when you're not talking to me? Fact. Period. Fact. Y'all, we've said so much and we do have to get ready to wrap this up. <laughs> um, maybe before, you know, the you know the next time I see Sarah, we'll get the chance to record something else. Because I feel yeah. like this could just go on and on and on and on and on. Because you love me. Because I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like this has been, you know, it's just been so dope. And I want to yeah. thank you for coming on and for allowing me to be vulnerable and to just share. And not just shower. Yes, but like <laughs> actually like vulnerable and being yeah. just to share like what's going on in a very respectful way. Yeah. Again, I love all my listeners. I love the mapped out family. Thank y'all for always saying what's up or hello darling to me. Um, I do want to give you the space. Do you have anything that you'd like to say in, in closing? Be kind to yourselves this week. Yes, give grace. Um, you, we, we consistently give grace to other people. Give yourself grace. Yeah. It is hard. It is a lot easier said than done. Yeah. But everyone grows and develops, including yourself. Yeah. At different ages and stages. Give yourself grace this week. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, 